Hey guys, uh, I know in last week I basically tried to set up uh, View 3 with Laravel in the Docker environment and it didn't end up the way that I wanted it to. Some things were working but the uh, main screen wouldn't load or the home page wouldn't load. And I am glad to say that I've gotten past that and then I've also figured out and gotten past another problem uh, which was my code changes weren't uh, getting uh, weren't view weren't being able to be viewed unless I actually restarted the npm server so um, as it is right now I am able to create a Laravel environment to where the uh, home screen will load and then if I change code on the in the code editor and refresh the browser um, the new changes will show up I still haven't gotten the true live reload in the sense that if I updated some code uh, if the browser would restart and actually sh view that, but getting closer and all, at least it's uh, to a functional state. So let's get started. And well, first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get into some sort of terminal that is connected to the WSL server. And I'm going to back up one level and then we're going to run the um, the build command that we're all familiar with going to the Laravel site and then um, grabbing a application uh, that uh, uh, has uh, MySQL in it because we will need My MySQL eventually so I'm going to hit enter on this and this might take it a second so I'll edit out all the stuff that goes on Okay, so now we've gotten a new application set up and the last little bit of things to do is to run the good old sale, uh, CD to the folder and run the sale up command. All right, so the application is running and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create one more terminal that'll allow me to open up the code editor Okay, so now we have a new application that has been created for us and we have the Docker containers running for our new application using the sail up command. We, we can take a look at the package.json file which is at the root of the application and we see that by default inertia and view 3 are already installed. So in a perfect world really all that we should need to do is we open up a terminal and then we are going to run npm run dev which should start our dev site and including our Vite plugin and Vite is a plugin that allows us to um, allows our compiled resources to be loaded it is the replacement for mix and if I start this and I try to view the content over here, you'll see that this is appearing, but that's because I went a step further and had to go back. So what we should see is in right now is the end result. So now we see that we get a blank screen and we have 0 .0 0.0.0.0 the port 5173 and then and it can't find that file and then the other error is um, the error saying that again same IP address this is zero dot IP address resources JS app dot JS which actually is our entire file if we look at a, or our entire uh, view application if we look at our app dot JS file you know that's really what it's doing it's it best description right here create inertia app right and giving it a title and this and that and the other thing so the problem is is that this IP address for some reason comes out as being the default IP address and the only solution that I've found so far is to uh, add some code to the vite.configuration.js file. Now also just so that people don't think that I'm just crazy and that I'm just missing a step here. Um, you know, I'm going to localhost and this is the result that I get, but when we start our uh, Vite server, it gives us a couple of other URLs, like such as localhost, and then specifically saying to go to port 5173. So we'll try that, and we get this page, which is cool. It looks like we're in the right step, and this is where I had ended my video last week, 
where, okay, I know that Laravel is there, I know that Veet is there, and then it's telling me that I should either start my development server for Laravel using the art artisan command, or try the Docker environment. But as you already know, we've already done both of those things. Now if I try the actual app URL itself, this is also going to give us a negative result, so to speak, because this is going to end up taking us out into the internet, and that doesn't work. So then what we can do to fix that is we can update our host file. So just bear with me here for just a second because I lost my notes here. So what we need to do there is we can uh, start a... Um, we can start Notepad, and we can run that as an administrator. Okay, and then I need to do view all files, open up the host file, scroll all the way down, copy this app URL, go back to the host file, and you'll see here that I've already done this once before. And I, I never liked this like protocol at the beginning of it, so I just get rid of that. And, and so now that the host file has been updated, I'm going to close the host file. Now that that has been updated, we should be able to use the given app URL. Um, that should show the blank screen essentially that we're getting, right? Okay, so this blank screen this zeroed out URL, let me just load it one more time for us. Um, okay, so that zeroed out URL with this port, the way to fix that, go into your vite.config.js file right here, and we're gonna add some little bit of code, and I have it written down already, so I'm just gonna paste it in, but we'll explain it. So we're gonna create a server direct uh, I guess it's a directive server configuration let's just put it that way and then we're gonna say that our hot module reload that's what HMR stands for hot module reload and then we're going to declare our host as local host now let me save this file and apparently I'm getting an error message I copied what one two little curly brackets I feel like and put a comma on that. Okay, so there we go. So now we have a good configuration file using the server, hot module reload, and then declaring hosts. So if we pop back over to our browser and give this a reload, I might have to, oh, that was super fast. Okay, great. So now we have our content loading from our server uh, configuration. So yay, so now we're getting somewhere. Okay, now. Uh, we're going to test one last thing further. I have opened up the welcome screen, so let me just pull this over here so that we can see both of them at the same time, and you can see that it's working slash not working. Okay, so Laravel has a wonderful thorough documentation. This line of code right here is this line of code right here. So what we can do as a test is we can just add a whole bunch of exclamation marks here, hit save, now, in a perfect world, our browser would have reloaded and we would see that content. I can't get that to work. I don't know why that doesn't work, but I'm gonna just manually reload it and see if we get our exclamation marks. We should, but you'll notice here that we're not getting those exclamation marks. And um, I couldn't figure out how to do this except for restarting uh, the NPM server, which obviously is not um, you know that's not going to work if we're actually working in this to, to restart the front-end server so what we need to do now is go back to our Vite configuration file we need to add one more setting to our um, to our server and that is going to be right here after server oh, let's just, yep there we go and we're gonna use a watch setting. So we're gonna say watch, and then we're gonna say use polling equal to true. And that should be the final step that we need for getting our content to at least show up here. This isn't part of the, um, the Laravel cache. I tried that in case somebody is thinking, oh, well, you need to just clear your Laravel cache. 
It is not the Laravel cache. It has something to do with Vite and the way that it that it basically listens to um, servers for for uh, new content. So if we hit uh, enter on this again, and of course I'm recording a video, so of course that didn't work because that should have worked and it doesn't. Oh, and that's because we have an error. So build error found. Um, one more little problem, and why is that that I can't copy and paste code today, apparently? So we'll try that. That work? I think it worked, maybe. Let's try this again. npm run dev, and hopefully dev server gets started correctly this time. Cool, so now we're uh, up and running again, and let's hit Let's uh, load the screen and we should see our extra quotation marks this time. And like I said, this takes a very long time to load. I was shocked when it first loaded um, fast. Okay, so after a considerable amount of time waiting, uh, we can see here that the content has been updated so that the exclamation marks have been removed. And um, although it's not necessarily too useful, I mean, you know, the convenience of having the browser reload the page automatically is really nice, but uh, refreshing this page, like I said, it takes it a really long time for this content to come through, and I do get some timeout errors in the console about loading some Vite resources. So this still isn't absolutely finished yet but at least it's workable and um, let's just review some of the things that we did we did basically all of the same things that you'll find in the documentation but to get things working this is really the most important part going into your vite.config.js file and setting up a server setting up the HMR or hot module reload setting that to localhost that'll get the page loading at least and you won't get that 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 error and then uh, add this watch uh, attribute as well setting uh, polling to true so that when we do make changes to the content and uh, we refresh this page those changes actually come through so I hope this video was helpful for you guys, and I will see you next week.